I've always liked messing around with small transmitters. So when I got an email from Retivis asking me to review this pair of UHF walkie talkies, I couldn't resist. And here it is. It's a pair of walkie talkies operating on the 477 MHz UHF CB band. That's 80 channels we have here in Australia. I understand there's also versions in other countries for their similar UHF allocations. What is the RT602? It's a small UHF walkie-talkie. The antenna is only about half the length of your little finger and it just fits in one hand very snugly. So a lot smaller than even say a Baofeng walkie-talkie that you might use on the amateur bands. It comes with rechargeable batteries, there's a pair of radios in the box and a charging cradle as well. Keep watching and I'll show you what you get and give it an on-air test. Alright, just looking at it, uh, rechargeable walkie-talkie, eight channels with basis, simple, compact, light, strong, easy to use, power, 500 milliwatts, reach of three to five kilometers, depending on place and conditions, volume control, squelch function for maximum sound quality, noise and echo reducer, 10 ringtones as well as a beep at the beginning and end of message, automatic channel search, batteries indicator, automatic go to sleep function, LED can be used as mini torch light and belt clip. And here we are, it's from Shenzhen Retivis Technology in China. I did ask them whether it was type approved in Australia for our 477 meg UHF CB band. The answer is yes, so yep, here it is. On the front, 10 call tones, 99 subcodes, voice operator transmission, and built in light. Okay, here's the batteries. They seem ultra light. But anyway, it says 7 volt DC, 600 milliamp hour. The charger, good sign as it's got the Aussie plug on it. Charging cradle. And it's a twin one, so you put them both in like that. So there it is, charging cradle two radios, two battery packs, and the plug-in charger. Output, five volts, one amp. Now there's two books. Warnings, whole book full of warnings, I think. Just read a sample of it. Uh, governments keep the radios in classification. Most of the classified walkie-talkie need to get local government license and operation is allowed. The detailed classification and the use of your 2A radios, please contact local government radio management departments for the following specified classification. The USA FRS, Australian CB, individual license not required. So, yep. Uh, at least there's mention of us. Stuff with RF exposure here. And let us look at the specs. On the front, it's got frequency range PMR446, 8 channels. Um, ah, yeah, okay, so this looks like a European instruction manual. It does have Vox, so that might be useful. Keypad lock, Vox icon, scan icon, push to talk. Sensitivity 0.2 microvolt, it seems reasonable. Audio output 300 milliwatts, not bad. Anyway, that's the instructions. It seems to be designed for the European market, even though the radio has got an Aussie plug. We'll find out in a moment if it does the Aussie channels. Now, how does this feel? Don't have the batteries in yet. Um, good sign 
you might be able to just see it down the camera actual proper screws marked inside it's got triple a so it looks like it can fit three triple a batteries writings upright that in oh sign of life there now the connections on here you might just be able to see them under the belt clip must align with the inside of the back and that aligns with those contacts which align with these contacts on the charging cradle now the battery tab of this it does hold it doesn't seem to be quite a positive fit it's a bit, a bit a little bit light and plasticky oh Well, that's a good sign 80 channels the uh, noise is quite loud when you change the channels in fact annoyingly so I wonder if there's a way to disable that I'll have to have a look at the instructions one two three one two three one two three uh, it sounds quite good. Uh, where's the volume control on this thing? Uh, the torch just on the opposite side of the PTT. This button here. To turn it off, I needed to press this for about three seconds. We'll do a receiver sensitivity test. We're on a local UHF CB repeater, channel 4. And we'll wait for someone to come up. We're comparing it with a Baofeng on the left. That can receive quite a few frequencies on the VHF range, including UHF CB. And the other thing, of course, is the Baofeng has a much better antenna that's detachable. It's close to being a quarter wavelength. So with any luck, someone will come up and talk so we can do a test a receiving test that is I wouldn't expect this little thing to be heard through the repeater in fact I should check its instructions to see if there is a repeater function I had to get some dirt so I'll transplant a few things and I'll get the hole ready for the banana okay so oh, yeah. this is on the bow thing where if I move it around Almost fully quieting. This repeater would be about 30 or 40 kilometers away over a fairly unobstructed path. It's pretty clear that the bow thing as a receiver is far superior to the Retivis, partly because the antenna on that is so much bigger than this one. I could actually hear the repeater on this, but I had to hold the radio in a particular spot and it would drop out otherwise. How do we do the basic settings? Uh, we've already covered the power button. You press it for three seconds to turn on and off. The M is the menu function. Pressing once can allow you to change the channel. Pressing twice until a number flickers on the top right hand corner can enable CTCSS, CDCSS, interference eliminator code option 
So we'll try it twice. And looks like there's a hundred tones. If you press it four times, you enable call tones, group one to 10. And that is the CA thing. Oh dear. Anyway, we don't want any of that. Pressing five times to turn on or off keypad tone. Press five times. And turn off. Well, that's a relief. That's done that. Having sorted out the main settings, just looking at some of the other bits of the instructions, there's a good explanation with CTCSS. Good that it mentions it doesn't stop you being eavesdropped, which could be a concern for some people. Something I want to stress again is there's nothing in the manual about duplex operating. So it would seem that there's no repeater offset to get into a UHF CB repeater. But if you're a crafty and you have two radios, then you could have the transmitting radio on the repeater's input and the other radio on the output and still be able to have a contact via a repeater if it's close enough. It's a bit unwieldy, most people wouldn't find that out, but it is a possibility if you happen to get one of these and want to do some experiments. Just looking up the squelch, and it's an auto squelch, not manually adjustable. Which, if you're interested in longer range, you want to be able to hear weak signals without it cutting in and out. Now, I'd prefer a manual squelch. If you're not carrying the radio, like if you've got it on a table or something, you want the radio to be sitting up like this so the antenna is vertical. Can you do that? No. Nah. Okay, it's getting a bit noisy here, so we'll just stop and see if we can get a bit better reception. On a bit of a mound and maybe 500 or 600 meters away and reception was still quite clear. RT602 same distance it's not audible on the Retevis. We're in a great location not very many meters above sea level but with a very clear outlook mostly over the water but to some populated areas. 
We'll put the radio on scan and see what I can pick up. Here's a feature I liked. I'm just pressing the button. I've got my finger on it. And if you listen carefully, a bit of a sound coming through. That's just when it passed channel 4, which was active. There we are. If you want to scan quickly, just do this. Oh, there was something just back there on channel 39. An interesting thing about this radio is when I go from channel 20, goes to 21, then it skips to 24. That's not a fault, but a design feature because channels 22 and 23 are for data type communication not for FM. So these radios actually have that rule built in, which is interesting. It's a bit awkward to change channels with this. There's a lot of button pressing, but I suppose the main people that this radio would be intended for, you wouldn't be changing channels a lot. How are you, Luke? Right there, if you want. Copy. Oh, by the way, if you are a parent watching this, and you're thinking about radios for your kids, just bear in mind that you can get some strange stuff on here. Yep, this is UHF CB where it's pretty much open slather and anything goes. I couldn't get a reply on channel 40. With this sort of radio you have to be pretty close to line of sight or very close by for people to actually hear you. Next thing will be a bit adventurous and try a repeater. These radios do not have a duplex function. That means they cannot operate on UHF CB repeaters like we have in Australia. That is unless you use two of them. UHF CB repeaters in Australia transmit on channels 1 to 8. They receive on channels 31 to 38. The nearest repeater to here is channel 4. This radio down here is on channel 4. And this one I'll transmit on 34. Can I have a radio check please? Yeah, thanks. The repeater I got into is in this direction. I wouldn't have been able to get into it if I wasn't anything close to line of sight like I am now. The other interesting thing about this radio in this spot is because it's fairly low power, I was able to receive the repeater simultaneously while I was transmitting without desensitising it. To sum up, these are fun little radios. However, bear in mind they are a toy and you won't get the sort of range that a more advanced UHF CB will give you even another handheld. The limitations include the very small antenna, 
which would really limit the range. The mute, it's automatic and you can't even unmute the radio, which means that if signals are scratchy and dropping in and out, then you just have to put up with it. You can't do anything more about it. There's some things about it that I would have liked to have been easier to use, like I would have liked dedicated controls or at least buttons for channel changing and volume. Having them just combined in the one pair of buttons and a menu control to switch between those and other functions made usability a little bit harder. The radio is very light and plasticky. It will probably survive if you sat on it, although if you dropped it onto a concrete floor, maybe it won't, although I haven't actually tried it. Thanks to Retivis for sending me the transceivers to review, and if you're interested, then have a look, just do a search on eBay or on the web, and you'll find out where to buy them. I'll also include a link below for more information.